great seeing you again and thanks for joining us for this Thursday's edition of Alaska Weather on the fourth day of March 2021. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service hosting today's show. Up first, um, hazardous weather graphic. We have a blizzard going on out over the Yukon Cusquam Delta, southwest coast of Novak Island up to St. Lawrence Island and that's, uh, that's out until about 9 p.m. this evening or into this evening, say 9 p.m. or so kind of the uh, warnings there along all of the west coast are ending sometime this evening. You can see we've got uh, winter storm warnings are out for the Yukon Cuscombe Delta Coast, gust 55 miles an hour and whiteout conditions in uh, blowing snow, which is going on right now at uh, Bethel, gust 40, 45 miles an hour with moderate to heavy snow and uh, visibility is just above zero, St. Lawrence Island and the uh, Seward Peninsula as well. And also for the northwest coast, Kotzebue Sound, and the uh, all the way up to the western Arctic coast, uh, blizzard warnings there for until about 11 p.m. tonight, and also for the uh, shaded in areas there of the uh, northwest coast, Kotzebue Sound. That's still about uh, through most of this evening. Expect that inland front weakens as it pushes inland, so just winter weather advisories for Bristol Bay, snow and blowing snow with uh, gusty winds, but visibility is not quite as bad as in the warning areas there, down to maybe less than a half mile at times. Same thing for the lower Yukon Valley, Nolato Hills, Eastern Norton Sound, central areas of the Seward Peninsula, as well as the Kobuk Valley Winter Weather Advisory. Actually, I, I'm mistaken, that's a wind advisory for the Kobuk Valley for a 40 to 55 mile an hour wind gust there. And that, of course, that'll result in some blowing snow as well, but not uh, to the extent of the other areas. Also a winter weather advisory there for the eastern North Slope and uh, Brooks Range area. Arctic Village, central Arctic coast, winter weather advisory, then the warning area for the western Arctic coast. And uh, uh, the Alaska Range looking at a winter weather advisory until 3 p.m. Uh, tomorrow afternoon. And that's for uh, wind, gusty winds and blowing snow again down to possibly less than a half mile at times. And that's it for the watches, warnings, and advisory. Satellite imagery showing that uh, front right along the west coast, uh, bringing the wind, strong wind, snow blowing snow conditions uh, to the area there. Top wind gusts, uh, Tin City, 68 miles per hour, was, uh, had a peak wind gust this afternoon. And uh, the other one that was above 60 that I could see was uh, Cold Bay, had a peak wind gust of 61 miles per hour as well. Um, there are some other areas in the western interior there that had uh, winds gusts higher than that. Uh, they were usually a little higher elevation there, but the uh, main known areas there, Cold Bay, 61 miles an hour, of course, Tin City, and uh, Nome, Teller seeing gusts uh, 45, 55 miles an hour, snow blowing snow there, and for, uh, let's see, Kotzebue gust of 55 miles an hour as well, and uh, all the way down to uh, Nikolsky, about 52 miles per hour there, but the front having just crossed uh, the eastern Aleutians there now. Kind of a break behind that, you can see some clearing, and then a big batch of uh, snow and snow showers coming in, the colder air coming out of the Russian Far East there. Let me get this rolling again. And uh, there we go. Okay, I'll just have to manually roll it along. And uh, let's see. There we go. Let me go back again. There we are. Okay, you can see the cold air coming out of the Russian Far East there. Uh, pretty much solid cloud cover. That's going to roll in. That'll be just uh, snow blowing snow moving into the Pribilofs tonight. More of a snow shower condition for the uh, Aleutians. Central and Eastern Interior today, pretty nice. High pressure ridge moving through. And uh, that's uh, changing again. It's uh, moving through. And the front will be actually slowing down and weakening as that ridge slows it down. And high pressure will persist uh, actually through the weekend over the Eastern Interior. Low pressure there south of the Queen Charlotte Islands, uh, spreading some moisture up into the panhandle, nothing too heavy, and just about nothing at all to the north. And the eastern interior, uh, pretty nice today with lighter winds, all the winds picking up in the central interior, and of course conditions deteriorate as you head out toward the southwest coast. 
and then lots of snow and snow showers and the cold air coming right out of the uh, Russian Far East there coming across the Bering Sea. For tonight, front moves inland along with the snow and uh, blowing snow, but it won't be the type of thing they saw along the west coast today as it weakens, pushes in the Cuscombe Valley there. But chance of snow, uh, northeast Bristol Bay, all of the Cuscombe Valley, uh, south central Alaska, right up to the northwestern and western Arctic coastal areas, western Brooks Range. And light snow chances increase even over the central interior, but a uh, lot harder to even increase the clouds there over toward the eastern uh, border, the Copper River Basin. You'll probably see an increase in the clouds as well as the eastern interior, but more of the mid and high level type. And then for the southeast coast, uh, low pressure off the south coast there uh, keeps it uh, unsettled with rain and snow periods of in the south and just a slighter chance up to the north there with uh, maybe just a little bit of light snow, higher elevations of uh, or the farther north you go there through Lynn Canal, but nothing very significant. Dry for the North Gulf Coast, increasing precipitation chances for the Prince William Sound area. And for tomorrow, that front again, uh, having trouble moving east where there are the high pressure holding over the eastern interior, but a new low forms and develops just east of Kodiak Island in the afternoon. So chance of snow, mainly Kenai Peninsula, Cook Inlet, Prince William Sound, less of a chance for the Manuscas to sit in the valley. Western Alaska Range, pretty good chance of persistent snow tomorrow, right up to the northwest there. Snow and blowing snow, but not like what you saw today, Bering Strait Coast up to the northwest coast, western uh, Arctic coast there, central Arctic coast, not too bad, uh, dry with light winds, east side even less wind, oh, and then a little bit more of a breeze there, that low, a little more significant there for the panhandle, so periods of rain or rain and snow mixed with uh, winds possibly gusting 25, maybe 30 miles an hour at the most, and numerous snow showers, windy conditions, snowfall levels down to sea level into the eastern Aleutians, Alaska Peninsula, Pribilofs, and uh, drying out though, back out towards Chimianat too, as the front just drops south of the Aleutians. Outlook for Saturday, another system develops and moves northeastward, high pressure south of the Alaska Peninsula there. Uh, that's going to produce a good southwest flow between that and the uh, low centers up to the north there. So quite a fetch of moisture, warmer air. That will be mostly rain over the western central Aleutians pushing northward. Rain and mixed snow tries to push into Nunavak Island and Cape Newenham with a warm front. Uh, definitely bringing warmer conditions in. This storm probably not as strong on the winds. It could be there. Uh, around the low center itself, say from the northern Yukon Delta coast into the Bering Strait, Norton Sound, definitely looks like another uh, round of uh, blizzard conditions possibly, but not for uh, the northwest interior. Some blowing snow, but, uh, and also snow, but not as bad as what you saw today or this evening. And then the interior there, high pressure holding. Uh, central eastern interior, pretty good conditions. Still some chances of snow showers, Prince William Sound, and maybe from the Chugach Range and Turnigan Arm, Passage Canal, Southern Copper Basin, North Gulf Coast, but uh, whatever falls will be on the light side. Fair with just some patchy areas of flurries, low clouds there over the eastern interior. And uh, rain and snow showers continue, mostly over the central and southern southeast coast with a lingering low there in the northeast Gulf of Alaska. And then moving on to the uh, taking a look at low temperatures for tonight, range from the upper 20s there, uh, say uh, Skagway Haines, Lower 30s around Juneau, mid to upper 30s as you get down toward Prince of Wales Island and uh, Annette Ketchikan near 20 for the North Gulf Coast. Into the teens, lower to mid there, uh, Kenai Peninsula and the uh, Northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage, Palmer area, and then down to the single numbers of Sitna Valley, a little below zero for the Copper River Basin. And up in the interior, lows uh, anywhere from uh, five above to five below, and then anywhere from 10 to 22 below for the upper Yukon Valley and minus uh, 20s along the Arctic coast, near zero for the lows there for the Seward Peninsula to below zero for Kotzebue Sound, about 10 for Nunavak Island. Teens, lower to mid, uh, single numbers right on down into the lower Yukon, Cuscoe River Valley areas, mid 20s for the Pribilofs, 20s, lower 30s for the Aleutians. And highs tomorrow afternoon, uh, upper 20s, south central Alaska, lower to mid 30s out along the coast, Seward to Homer and Seldovia, lower 30s for uh, Valdez. Upper 30s northern panhandle, otherwise mid 40s down to the south, central and southern areas, mid 30s Kodiak Island. And over the interior, uh, 10 to 15 for your highs in the central interior, warmer along the Alaska range with the winds, upper 20s there. And uh, right around zero or a little above, above for the Yukon Flats, and 5 to 10 for the Brooks Range, north slope, a little below zero, central eastern Arctic coast, lower teens there for the St. Lawrence Island area. And out west, uh, 30s for the most part to near 40 for the ADAC area into the uh, well around Falls Pass. And for the lows Saturday morning, 
looking uh, again a little bit below zero for the Copper River Basin. Not too bad. Uh, teens for South Central Alaska, lower 20s there. Uh, say for Seward down to uh, Kachemak Bay, mid 20s Kodiak Island vicinity, and lower 30s for the Northern Panhandle, mid 30s down south. Single numbers are Bristol Bay, and looking about uh, 0 to 10 below for the Central Interior, Tanaha Valley areas to about uh, Northway and Toke, and 10 to 15 below the Brooks Range, 15 to 20 below or so, maybe uh, 22 or 3 below zero for the North Slope on out to the Arctic Coast, and still below zero into St. Lawrence Island and the Seward Peninsula, and uh, 3 to 5 degrees for the Yukon Delta, 7 to 12 for the Cuscombe Delta, upper 20s, the Pribilofs, and your lows above freezing for the most part, a uh, little above freezing, lower, to, lower 30s for the Aleutians, and the Alaska Peninsula, upper 20s, lower 30s. And for the highs, Saturday afternoon for the southeast coast, upper 30s, lower 40s again, near 20 in the Copper River Basin, upper 20s, lower 30s, south central Alaska, mid 30s, Kodiak Island, and up to the north in the interior, single numbers, uh, Yukon Flats, Brooks Range into the North Slope, a little below zero along the Arctic coast, mid-teens in the Tanaha Valley, and uh, upper teens, St. Lawrence Island, near 30 along the southwest coast, 30s and lower 40s for the Aleutians, upper 30s for the Pribilof Islands, and Bristol Bay, mostly in the mid-20s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at coastal water forecasts, uh, good gales there along the uh, coast of the Panhandle. Uh, south coast, south to southeast, 40, 45 knots. These 22 to 25 feet. Uh, falling to minimum gales as you head northward uh, for the north coast and even farther, eastern north gulf coast there, down to 15 knots out of the east. South 15, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, northern inside waters. Stevens Passage, 25 knots from the southeast with gusts to 35 knots. And south 30 knots for Clarence Strait, seas 9 feet. And for Saturday, small craft advisories continue for Clarence Strait, southeast 25 with 5 foot seas. And lighter winds out along the coastline there. Uh, east southeast, 20 to 25 knots there with 13 foot seas. North coast, uh, southeast to northeast, 15 to 20. And Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, northerlies. Small craft advisories, north winds, 25 knots, and Stevens Passage, pretty light wind-wise, down to 10 knots from the north. Prince William Sound, eastern north Gulf Coast, both looking uh, pretty good wind-wise tomorrow. Light, 10 knots out of the east for Prince William Sound, seas 2 to 3 feet. And the uh, western north Gulf Coast, southeast at 15, but uh, small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, where winds will be west-northwest at 30 knots with 6 to 8 foot seas. Uh, Southern Cook Inlet, north 15, and Northern Cook Inlet, northeast at 10. North, north winds at 10 knots uh, for Northern Cook Inlet on Saturday, so winds stay light, 15 knots south of the Forelands, but a uh, big increase in the winds, Kamishak Bay, northwest sustained 40 knots, 15 foot seas, and 45 knots out of the northwest for the Barren Islands. Western North Gulf Coast, northerly is at 20 knots, 9 foot seas, and Prince William Sound, north 15, northeast 15, there for the Eastern North Gulf Coast. East side of Kodiak Island, uh, good gale force winds out on the northwest tomorrow, 45 knots, that extends all the way down to Castle Cape, and then Castle Cape to, sit, or to Cape Sarachev, west 40 knots. Uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, seas will be much higher at 28 feet, with west winds at 45 knots, and westerly gales into uh, Bristol Bay where, with 13 foot seas, Shelikoff Strait, northwest 30. And uh, a little bit of a drop off there for Shilkoff Strait on Saturday, northwest 25 and northwest 40. Gales continue there east side of Kodiak Island with uh, minimum gales from Sitkanak to Castle Cape out of the northwest. And for the Alaska Peninsula, west southwest 30 knots and seas 15 to 18 feet and 25 knots southwest winds for Bristol Bay with 9 foot seas. On Alaska Island, west winds tomorrow, 40 to 45 knots, seas 18 to 29 feet, almost 30 feet there on the uh, north side of both Unalaska and Unmak Island. Unmak Island, west 40 knots, Adak and Atka, west 35 to 40 knots, and then for uh, Amchitka Island, all the way out to Shimia, southwesterlies in the forecast at 40 knots with 25 foot seas. And uh, from about Kiska, or actually more for Shimia and Atu, those winds increased to 45 knots on Saturday, and uh, generally for Kiska and Amchitka, about 35 out of the south with seas under 20 feet. And south-southwest, 30 knots, seas uh, 15 to 20 feet for Adak and Atka. Unmak Island, south, 35 knots, that's good for gale warnings there. Unalaska Island, south-southwest, 30 knots, seas 15 to 21 feet. 
Southwest coast, uh, strongest wind south of Nunavak Island, be southwest at 30 knots. Yukon Delta Coast, St. Lawrence Island, southwest at 20. Uh, strongest winds will be found around the Primaloff Islands, west 45 knots, 31 foot seas. Southwest 35 for St. Matthew Island with 28 foot seas. And for Saturday, uh, for Norton Sound, uh, Brisk Wind Advisory, south 25 knots and east 25 knots for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area. South 30 for the Yukon Delta Coast, southwest 25, uh, south of Nunavak Island. Pribilof, south 30, seas near 20 feet. 40 knot winds out of the south for St. Matthew Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast tomorrow, brisk wind advisories there, 25 knot winds. Otherwise, for the remainder of the coastline, east at 20. And from Cape uh, Beaufort all the way down to Wales, southeast winds, 30 knots. And those will continue to diminish, uh, turning more southerly and coming down to 20 knots from uh, Wales up to Cape Beaufort, and then east 20 for the western Arctic coast, southeast 15 central coast, light easterly breeze there on the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline at uh, 10 knots. And for tonight, uh, that uh, active front bringing the blizzard conditions to the coast uh, will continue. And winter weather advisories as that thing moves eastward there and weakens, but a widespread area of snow from south central Alaska, Cuscombe Valley up to the western Arctic coast. And tomorrow that kind of stalls out there with high pressure over the eastern interior, keeping it dry. But numerous snow showers over the eastern Bering Sea move on shore to the southwest coast. Another storm drives up into the Bering Strait on Saturday with more snow, blowing snow, and gale force winds. Hey there, sky gazers. Trace here. Mars is one of the most fun planets to point out to friends because even the most casual star friend can see its reddish hue. And through this week and next, you get way more Martian bang for your buckazoid because of a conjunction with two star clusters. Pop outside around 8 p.m. and face west. Mars is there, but if you can't quite see, the Orion Belt stars should point right at it and help. The best part, you can look to the right of Mars and you'll see the Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters, and to the left, next to Aldebaran, is the Hyades. These star clusters are groups of many hundreds of stars that were all born recently, astronomically speaking. The Hyades contain more heavy metals than our sun, and the Pleiades are hot, young, blue-white giants and subgiant stars. Rawr. Watch Mars split the difference between these clusters and keep looking up. The beluga whale, also known as the white whale, lives in large groups and are unusual among whales. They have no dorsal fin, large bulbous heads, and they can actually swim backwards. To feed, they produce sound to find and hunt fish and invertebrates, and they use sound to communicate. They're also known as the canaries of the sea because they make such a diversity of noises. They make chirps and whistles and gurgles and trumpeting sounds. They just make all kinds of sounds. In the U.S., beluga whales live in the cold waters of Alaska, and there are five separate populations. Of those five, the Cook Inlet population is the smallest, and has declined by about 75%. Subsistence hunting may have contributed to this initial population drop, but this practice was regulated starting in 1999, with the last hunt in 2005. Still, the beluga population here has yet to recover. We listed Cook and the beluga whales as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act in 2008, and we had hoped that the population would start recovering, but we are still seeing a continued decline. And these beluga whales are only found in Cook Inlet, and so if they go extinct, we don't think any other belugas will come back and populate this area. These whales spend most of their summer near Anchorage, Alaska's largest city, where threats to belugas are on the rise as the city grows. These may include diminishing food, habitat loss or destruction, pollution, toxins, and human-caused noise, which hampers their ability to feed and communicate. Researchers are trying to understand which of these threats may be impacting them most, but Cook Inlet is a tough place to work. It's really hostile for research. We have the strong tides, which makes it challenging for human safety, and we can't see through the water. It is very muddy, so we're pretty much limited to the part of the animal that breaks the surface of the water. And as a result, we have limited information about the specific population dynamics of Cook and the Beluga whales. 
Up until recently, information has mainly come from annual aerial surveys from aircraft and boat or shore-based photo identification surveys that use unique markings to tell animals apart. Scientists also use passive acoustics to listen for belugas, but none of these methods can detect much information about their health. So it's really been a game changer with, with the whole species in the spotlight designation. We've gotten more resources within our agency. For instance, we're able to use a drone to collect some aerial imagery of belugas in the wild, and we're hoping to learn some information about the age classes, information about the health status. And probably the most important bit of information that we'll get out of that is we'll be able to identify the new calves. And we're hoping if we keep doing this every year, we'll be able to get an estimate of calf production every year that will tell us something about how well the population is doing. We are also expanding upon our biopsy studies, hopefully to give us some information about sex, the individual's reproductive status, some genetic information, uh, some contaminant loads. Public and private partners are contributing as well. Some are looking at toxin levels in the whale's prey, while others are analyzing beluga teeth to learn about their age and past diet. Others monitor water quality and how belugas react to boats, and more check to see if their behavior changes with increased background noise. All of these findings will go toward developing effective recovery strategies for this population. As for what you can do, if you're out boating, give beluga space. Don't drive right up next to them. Stay about 100 yards away. If you're flying over them, just remember that you're putting noise into the water as well, and so stay at least 1,500 feet above them. Report a stranded beluga whale as soon as possible, and that's if they're dead stranded or live stranded. The amount of information that we can learn from these animals by responding to a stranding is monumental, and it will help our efforts to recover them. Together, we can help beluga whales thrive in the dynamic waters of Cook Inlet. With continued research and good stewardship, we hope to see this population grow in the years to come. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at coastal water forecasts, uh, good gales there along the uh, coast of the Panhandle. Uh, south coast, south to southeast, 40, 45 knots. He's 22 to 25 feet. Uh, falling to minimum gales as you head northward uh, for the north coast and even farther, the eastern north gulf coast there, down to 15 knots out of the east. South 15, Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, northern inside waters. Stevens Passage, 25 knots from the southeast with gusts to 35 knots. And south 30 knots for Clarence Strait, seas 9 feet. And for Saturday, small craft advisories continue for Clarence Strait, southeast 25 with 5 foot seas. And lighter winds out along the coastline there. Uh, east southeast, 20 to 25 knots there with 13 foot seas. North coast, uh, southeast to northeast, 15 to 20. And Lynn Canal Glacier Bay, northerlies. Small craft advisories, north winds, 25 knots, and Stevens Passage, pretty light wind-wise, down to 10 knots from the north. Prince William Sound, eastern north Gulf Coast, both looking uh, pretty good wind-wise tomorrow. Light, 10 knots out of the east for Prince William Sound, seas two to three feet. And the uh, western north Gulf Coast, southeast at 15, but uh, small craft advisories, Kamishak Bay and the Barren Islands, where winds will be west-northwest at 30 knots with six to eight foot seas. Uh, Southern Cook Inlet, north 15, and Northern Cook Inlet, northeast at 10. North, north winds at 10 knots uh, for Northern Cook Inlet on Saturday, so winds stay light, 15 knots south of the Forelands, but a uh, big increase in the winds, Kamishak Bay, northwest sustained 40 knots, 15 foot seas, and 45 knots out of the northwest for the Barren Islands. Western North Gulf Coast, northerlies at 20 knots, 9 foot seas, and Prince William Sound, north 15, northeast 15, there for the Eastern North Gulf Coast. East side of Kodiak Island, uh, good gale force winds out of the northwest tomorrow, 45 knots, extends all the way down to Castle Cape and then Castle Cape to, sit, or to Cape Sarachev, west 40 knots. Uh, Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, seas will be much higher at 28 feet with west winds at 45 knots and westerly gales into uh, Bristol Bay where, with 13 foot seas, Shelikoff Strait, northwest 30. And uh, a little bit of a drop off there for Shilkoff Strait on Saturday, northwest 25 and northwest 40. Gales continue there east side of Kodiak Island with uh, minimum gales from Sitkanak to Castle Cape out of the northwest. And for the Alaska Peninsula, west southwest 30 knots and seas 15 to 18 feet and 25 knots southwest winds for Bristol Bay with nine foot seas. 
On Alaska Island, west winds tomorrow, 40 to 45 knots. These 18 to 29 feet, almost 30 feet there on the uh, north side of both on Alaska, Unmac Island, Unmac Island west 40 knots, Adak and Atka west 35 to 40 knots, and then for uh, Amchitka Island all the way out to Shimia southwesterlies in the forecast at 40 knots with 25 foot seas. And uh, from about Kiska, or actually more for Shimia and Atu, those winds increased to 45 knots on Saturday, and uh, generally for Kiska and Amchitka about 35 out of the south with seas under 20 feet. And south southwest, 30 knots, seas uh, 15 to 20 feet for Adak and Atka. Unmak Island, south 35 knots, that's good for gale warnings there. Unalaska Island, south to southwest, 30 knots, seas 15 to 21 feet. Southwest coast, uh, strongest wind south of Nunavak Island, be southwest at 30 knots. Yukon Delta Coast, St. Lawrence Island, southwest at 20. Uh, strongest winds will be found around the Pribilof Islands, west 45 knots, 31 foot seas, southwest 35 for St. Matthew Island with 28 foot seas. And for Saturday, uh, for Norton Sound, uh, Brisk Wind Advisory, south 25 knots and east 25 knots for the uh, St. Lawrence Island area, south 30 for the Yukon Delta Coast, southwest 25, uh, south of Nunavik Island, Pribilof, south 30 seas near 20 feet, 40 knot winds out of the south for St. Matthew Island. Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast tomorrow, brisk wind advisories there, 25 knot winds, otherwise for the remainder of the coastline, east at 20, and from Cape uh, Beaufort all the way down to Wales, southeast winds, 30 knots. And those will continue to diminish, uh, turning more southerly and coming down to 20 knots from uh, Wales up to Cape Beaufort, and then east 20 for the western Arctic coast, southeast 15 central coast, light easterly breeze there on the eastern Beaufort Sea coastline at uh, 10 knots. And for tonight, uh, that uh, active front bringing the blizzard conditions to the coast uh, will continue. And winter weather advisories as that thing moves eastward there and weakens, but a widespread area of snow from south central Alaska, Cuscombe Valley up to the western Arctic coast. And tomorrow that kind of stalls out there with high pressure over the eastern interior, keeping it dry. But numerous snow showers over the eastern Bering Sea move on shore to the southwest coast. Another storm drives up into the Bering Strait on Saturday with more snow, blowing snow and gale force winds. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.